for like a smaller company, right? Let's say, let's say I'm a solo owner, right? And I've been just kind of like a glorified sales rep for a long time. And I'm like, okay, I want to, I want to step up my game and start building reps under me in terms of like, you know, the branding, you know, like that, the outfit type stuff, which is really common in direct to consumer sales. Do you feel, I mean, obviously it's better for the rep experience to get them that stuff like immediately because we're already persuading them into a commission-based sales opportunity. The more legit that we can make them feel right, the better that it ties them into the company. Now, some opportunities have more attrition, which means you can give that stuff and that rep disappears and you lost 50 bucks in polos or whatever it was. Right. So if you were thinking a while back, let's say you were, it was just you, like, how would you handle those kind of like miscellaneous expenses? Yeah, I remember because to me, it was, it was about $150 worth of stuff I was giving them. So I would actually make them sign a one page agreement that says they owe me $500 if they didn't return my stuff within seven days of us terminating our relationship together. Some people gets, you know, it holds them accountable. Some people really, they just, they don't care. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if you're the biggest expense to any company is typically hiring someone and then them quitting or failing because of your, uh, poor leadership or poor process. So yeah. once you have them committed and they said, yes, invest the tools, give them the right tools to be successful. Cause mm -hmm. if you have asset, it, if you don't give them the right stuff right off the bat, then you're basically asking them to work with one hand tied behind their back. Right. In my opinion, 100%. Uh, but uh, there's a relationship thing to there too. Like, Hey, we're a small company. Here's your tools. This cost me $500. Here's shirts. Here's binders. Here's brochure. Each brochure cost me a dollar 25. Mm -hmm. and you kind of share that with them and be vulnerable yeah um, people will typically understand and rise up so we had plenty of people that just re returned the stuff because they care they, they didn't want to leave me hanging yeah um, some people assume that you just give them stuff and it was free they don't really think about what yeah. resources it took to to put that stuff together um but yeah i think that's yeah that, yeah that's 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 a great that's a great uh perspective it's like you know, the transparency and authenticity, you know, should just be throughout the whole process, right? It's just like, be honest, because most companies are not honest and people are attracted to the honesty and the transparency because they're not used to that when looking at, you know, new employers. But that's a really cool idea saying, hey, this is an investment. This is what it costs. We know that not 100% of people are going to be a perfect fit. Uh, we think that you obviously are, which is why we're, you're bringing, we're bringing you on board. Um, but if for some reason you realize it's not a fit, you know, we just want the the materials back and, you know, you have a, a simple agreement. Obviously the, the, the agreement piece is just to kind of like hold them accountable to the actual thing and they can disappear off the face of the earth. But um, I, never, that's great. I, never, I never pursued the $500, <laughs> you know, but it's a great, it's a great idea and great tool. I think that's a really, really cool tip that I haven't uh, heard about before. <laughs>